Hey guys, and welcome back to Ultra Game Mode. And today, let's take an unboxing of this EVGA 550 B5 power supply. Now, I got this power supply fairly cheap actually on Amazon for about £35. I think it's still actually about £35, £36 maybe. This is actually looking quite a promising deal I've got here. We have here a fully modular. 80 plus bronze power supply 550 watts is really impressive actually for the money it's an established brand obviously everyone's heard of evga fully modular is pretty it's pretty amazing actually um at this price point um so yeah just taking a quick look at the box if you can see that there yep um, so EVGA here, quite a sort of standard box on the back here, just sort of like talking about power ratings and stuff. Uh, let's have a look here at the 12 volt rail, has got a 45.8 amps coming through it. So yeah, it looks perfectly powerful for more or less any kind of relatively sort of middle to low end graphics card I would say. Obviously the high end cards like your uh, 3070 aren't going to be good for this power supply. You're going to need really at least a 650, probably even a 750 watt to really be perfectly safe with that. Um, but yeah, this this does look good. I mean certainly for the price I paid for the £35, I'm really happy with that. Quite a, quite a basic design, obviously in black, which is black matte everything you know it it, it, it works it, it works with computer hardware i find so yeah let's um let's go and take an unboxing of it now shall we so i am look quite looking forward to this uh using this power supply we're going to be using it in a upcoming build actually i've got plans it might be a few weeks away in the build but it should come soon So how does the box open from here? Oh, there we go. <laughs> it's quite well, uh, quite well taped up, I must say. That. <laughs> yep. So we just open it from there, and then we just open there, and then we're just going to pull it out here. There we go. So can you see that? Yep. Quite a nice little design we have here. So first of all. A little sort of user guide manual sort of thing uh, just sort of explains how to install it and everything um, that's pretty self-explanatory still should still trying to get used to camera angles and stuff but we're getting there so yeah we have a UK um, free pin power cable so that's actually nice to have as well especially for the price point I'm happy about that um, Oh, actually, we've got some Velcro straps, so that's quite nice to kind of clean up your cables and stuff like that. So that's a nice little addition. And what we've got here... Oh, actually, that's actually really nice. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Uh, so we we have the four screws to plug the power supply into your case, well, to, to screw your power supply into your case, if your case doesn't already have that. And we also have what's called like a jumper. Um, this is basically like a jumper cable, so you can actually plug this in to your um, mains 24 pin cable, the, the actual 24 pin one, and then you'll actually start the power supply without having to connect it to a motherboard, which is actually really nice, and I think that's a really great uh, little feature, great little add to the to the package there. I'm really impressed with this so far. I mean, I haven't even used it yet, but. I mean, the actual box, like I was saying, from what I was saying, the actual box was actually really heavy. And generally, a power supply that is heavy is usually a good power supply. I mean, that's not always a complete rule, but generally, a good heavy power supply means you're going to get good, reliable power, and it's going to be a unit which you could hopefully use for many, many years. Now, I'm not actually sure of the exact warranty that we have on this. I need to, if we're going to look at the. I'm not sure. So let's have a look at the cables now. 
Um, so yeah, obviously fully modular, so there's actually nothing connected into the power supply currently. I really like the fully modular design because especially if you're going for like an ITX build, um, this would actually be really nice because obviously in ITX you've got a limited amount of space so being able to use only the cables that you absolutely need to use is really good. Um, let's start off with the big cable. I'm actually just going to move this out of the way for now. There we go. Um, and I'll take measure here. Let's have a little look. Uh, we'll probably put about that much. Uh, we'll put, put about that much on just in case. It actually will connect into the power supply end, which is I don't know why they've quite done it like that, but um, yeah, that, that, that's just how it actually connects into the actual power supply itself. I'll show you when once I've got the unit out. And then here's the extra 24 pin. It's not actually detachable. You will need a 24 pin ATX motherboard. Um, or, well, it doesn't have to be ATX motherboard, uh, ATX standard motherboard. It can be obviously different sizes, but yeah. Um, the cable length is pretty decent actually. Um, let's have a look once we extend it right. So it's about 60 centimeters roughly. So we've got a bit of play there for uh, for cases that might be a little bit bigger, that gives you a little bit extra. So let's have a look, the CPU cable. Now I think that end will go into the power supply and then you have a four uh, by four pin. So you do have the ability, if you've only got a four pin in your motherboard for your CPU, additional CPU power, you will be able to split that. Or obviously if you've got an 8-pin, which most people have, you'd just be able to put it together and that'd be fine as well. And then this cable is about, again, about 60 centimetres there, just a little bit over. And 60 centimetres is basically 24 inches for those in who's maybe doing inches instead. Um, so those are our two main cables um, that obviously you're going to have to use. This is for Molex actually, which is an interesting choice, but obviously, again, because we have the modular design, we can literally just say, we're not using Molex, so we will put that to the side and we'll put that back in the box, and we won't put that in our case, which again is really nice. You get three Molex here on, the, on this cable, uh, three there, and then this cable is about, it's about, they're more or less all 60 centimeters, yeah, it looks like. And so our next cable is our graphics cards, basically. Um, so you have the two eight pins and they also detach. So you have a, either a six pin or an eight pin you can use there, and then you have two of them. Um, so this power supply, unfortunately, isn't gonna be able to use two graphics cards unless you have two uh, eight pin graphics cards so if you have a graphics card that uses um, two eight pins or two six pins then obviously this power supply isn't going to be good for you if you want to use a uh, dual uh, GPUs um, so that's one thing to bear in mind but yeah and again again it's about 60 it's about 60 centimeters there I make um, another one is a SATA so we have three SATAs again here Again, if you haven't got any setters, you could obviously uh, put those to the side and not put it back in the box and not use it. Uh, we've got another one here, which is actually, which looks like for like floppy drives. Wow, that's really odd. Uh, it's for like floppy drives or something, or maybe extension for Molex or something, I don't know. That's an odd cable. I wouldn't put that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think you'd actually use that in any build nowadays, but it's there if you need it, if you, if you need that one. And then you have three uh, satas again uh, that connect into the power supply there. So let's take a look at the actual power supply now. This is a heavy unit actually. I'm quite surprised. Yeah, this is actually quite a uh, quite a unit. And so yeah, uh, the big. 120 millimeter fan as expected so that's really nice um we have our power ratings at the side the on off switch and also we have an eco mode so if you want to use this without the fan spinning then you would put that to the on position and you'd have a little bit more quieter of a system however 
I would suggest if you're using any kind of sort of medium to certainly to hire graphics cards, you're certainly going going to need that eco mode off. Um, you sh you know you're going to need the extra power, so I wouldn't I wouldn't be putting it into eco mode um, for that. But if you've got like quite a low powered system, I think eco mode would be perfectly fine. So yeah, um, your standard um, your standard UK connector there, or well, it's actually standard anywhere, but it, yeah, that's just a standard connector. You would have this side actually showing if you had a if you if you had a um, either a PSU shroud which wasn't complete, or if you had a non PSU shroud, then you'd actually see that side as it plug in because this side would be the side pointing towards like motherboard and that. Yeah. Um, and obviously the back is, is kind of where we're looking at here so motherboard here this is where that sort of quite odd connector which I don't know why they've done that but they've done it like that where they put the uh, they put like 9 and then by 5 um, I don't know why they've done that but that would just connect into, into here the CPU would obviously connect into CPU 1 SATA 1 and SATA 2 is the ones I've just showed you and peripherals is that one and then your VGA 1 is there so obviously in higher class power supplies you probably have the second one there uh, for, for VGA also as well for CPU um, you're only going to be able to have a 8 pin CPU if I didn't say that already uh, so if you have a mod board that has um, an 8 pin with maybe an additional 4 pin uh, you wouldn't be able to plug in the 4 pin, pin. You wouldn't be able to plug in the 4-pin, but most of the time, plugging in just the 8-pin would actually work fine anyway, so I don't really see that as a problem. Um, quite a nice design. I think that's quite sort of pleasing on the eye. Um, it looks quite good. Uh, so there's going to be an upcoming build with this. Um, I've actually got a Ryzen 3600 in the post at the moment, so I'm hoping that will come soon and we'll be able to do a little build video, hopefully the build video will be a Ryzen 3600 using uh, the graphics card of a GTX uh, 1650 Super hopefully um, so that will be a nice little build that we'll be doing um, hopefully probably towards the end of the month that will be so it might be about 3-4 weeks away but like I said I'm going to try and release a video every week I do apologise last week I didn't release one but unfortunately stuff comes up in life sometimes and it happens but um please if you are enjoying the content here please like comment and subscribe and i will see you in the next one bye guys